Uh, as um, an introduction, um, I would like to, to, to show you so, some data that we, we have obtained in a, in a, in a court of uh, co-infected HIV, HBV uh, uh, patients um, who were on long-term tenofovir therapy, because I think it was quite uh, interesting and gave some uh, useful information. So these patients were on tenofovir for, for their uh, HIV uh, uh, infection uh, at, that, uh, at that time, um, and we had uh, the chance to have a, a long-term observation of these patients. And you see here what, what, what is obviously expected, the, the kinetics of HBS antigen uh, uh, in these patients very, very slow or plateauing over uh, years um, uh, of treatment, uh, some patients like ten, almost 10 years of, uh, of treatment. Um, reg regarding um, the uh, uh, intrahepatic uh, viral DNA, uh, we had uh, a, su a, sub um, a subpopulation of patients who had paired biopsies uh, dur during the, the follow-up. Um, and wh what you can see is that even uh, after uh, three, four, or five years uh, of treatment, so CCC DNA was still uh, detectable in, in, in these patients, uh, as well as the uh, uh, total vowel DNA in, in the liver, suggesting that there are still some persisting vowel DNA synthesis in the liver, despite a so-called vowel suppression, uh, just by looking at the um, uh, vowel load um, in, in serum with the currently available uh, PCR. Um, so uh, wh one of the uh, um, questions is whether we, we can do more and, and do more vowel suppression in, in, in the liver to achieve the, the functional cure. Uh, so uh, as you all know, we, we have different modes of, of uh, um, action that could be used for that, so either you, uh, going through uh, um, strategies modulating the immune system or, or direct acting antivirals, and today we will focus on new nukes and, and uh, uh, capsid uh, assembly modulators. So the, the, the rationale here is whether we can enhance the suppression of viral DNA synthesis in the liver and affect the pool of CCC DNA by suppressing intracellular recycling or new rounds of infection, or uh, also whether we could have additional effect on CCC DNA uh, and or on restoration uh, of uh, innate immunity in infected hepatocytes. Regarding uh, nucleoside analogs, I mean, you, you all know the, those that are approved or have been approved. Um, and um, <laughs> there's a, a bit of, um, only a few new drugs, actually, um, um, that are in, in development. So you've heard about um, tenofovir alafenamid, TAF, uh, developed by Gilead. And there are a, a few other prodrugs um, of tenofovir, uh, one developed by Contravir, and uh, uh, Bezifovir, which is uh, uh, also uh, an acyclic phosphonate analog of, um, of, a gua of guanine. So uh, only a few drugs that are, that, that are being developed. So the, uh, uh, the, the drug for which we have more, more data is the tenofovir al alafenamid, or TAF, uh, and, and Pietro just mentioned you that uh, with modification uh, as a prodrug, you, you have an enhanced delivery uh, of active form uh, of tenofovir diphosphate to, the, to hepatocytes, so lower uh, doses are used, and um, so uh, systemic exposure of tenofovir are, are reduced. So it's been well shown for HIV, and now we have the publication um, that have been um, released uh, recently in September uh, for the two phase three studies um, for, for hepatitis B infected patients. So I will just show you one of these uh, studies, uh, the one in the E antigen negative patients, when you see here um, um, a group of patients, uh, almost three, 300 patients received TAF, 25 milligram versus uh, tenofovir, um, um, uh, 300 milligram in 140 patients. You see here the uh, um, um, uh, population of patients and the uh, virologic outcome. So the, the study was designed to, for, for a non-inferiority uh, and uh, this was shown in terms of, of our load suppression. You see here that the uh, uh, TAF was not non-inferior to, uh, to tenofovir. 
what was interesting is that uh, um, the lower exposure of, um, of tenofovir in these patients uh, translated in uh, fewer uh, adverse events or side effects in terms of bone, marrow, uh, bone, uh, bone mineral uh, density, sorry, uh, and uh, also on uh, renal safety. Uh, it was also interesting to, to see that uh, more tough uh, re, uh, patients re achieve ALT normalization for a reason that is unknown because there was no more vowel suppression uh, in these patients, so that's something that may, may, may be uh, uh, needed for further studies. So, um, so what we can conclude is staph is non-inferior to, to uh, TDF, but safer in, uh, for bone and, and kidneys. Um, it might be a better option for uh, uh, than tenofovir for long-term therapy, uh, especially in patients with kidney and bone disorders. But this is still not uh, answering the um, uh, finite duration of uh, therapy, uh, and we we still need drugs with a better antiviral uh, activity because here they didn't show that it was suppressing more of our uh, viral DNA than than, than the uh, classic uh, tenofovir TDF. Uh, so here it's um, uh, an interesting uh, concept now that we have drugs that are tar targeting capsid, capsid assembly. And, uh, uh, and we have more and more uh, of this um, uh, family uh, coming along. Uh, so what, what we can expect with, with drugs tar targeting capsid assembly is kind of a, having a, a canonical effect on, on the assembly of, of, of capsids um, that would lead to an inhibition of, of vowel replication, so that this is the, affected, the, the expected effect. Uh, but we, we, we have also to, to see what, whether there, there could be some additional effect, uh, knowing the, uh, the biology of HBC. And if you remember well, um, there's one effect which would be the recycling uh, of the uh, um, uh, um, capsid to the nucleus to either to amplify or to maintain the pool of CCC DNA. We've seen that it, it's a slow process for HBV, much slower than, than for DHBV. Um, but still, I mean, this is a mechanism by which the, the pool of CCC DNA could be maintained over, over the years of, of therapy. Um, and the other uh, potential effect is that the um, uh, capsid protein, as you know, can be found in, in, in the nucleus of infected cells. When we were doing uh, liver biopsies and immunostaining, we could find uh, HBC staining in the nucleus of, um, of these infected cells. And th there, there might be a different um, function. Um, one is to uh, modulate the uh, austinate immune response in these infected cells, and the other one is to, um, to maintain CCC DNA in an active state. So potentially, um, these uh, capsid assembly modulators could not only inhibit vowel DNA synthesis, but also uh, in inhibit CCC DNA uh, maintenance or amplification and may have also some additional uh, effect in terms of silencing CCC DNA as well as on, on the restoration of hostinate immune responses. So these are the potential uh, uh, mode of action that could be expected from these capsid assembly modulators. So here is a, a, a number of molecules that are in, in development and that, that come from the uh, Hepatitis B Foundation website as, uh, is trying to, to keep a, a, an update of all these drugs and we, we have to thank um, uh, Tim for, for that effort. Uh, and you see that there are some drugs um, um, uh, developed by a Chinese company, uh, HEC, uh, and other drugs um, from Novira, and now that has been bought by, by Janssen. Uh, Janssen has also the, its own um, uh, drugs, and uh, Assembly Bioscience has also uh, its own drugs, and, and other companies also have uh, um, uh, drugs that are in preclinical development for which we have less information or no information. Um, so just... Uh, um, uh, to give you uh, some example of the uh, structure of these compounds, so these are the classic ones were the uh, heteroaryl uh, dihydropyrimidines that were uh, first um, uh, developed by Bayer uh, more than 10 years ago. It was published in Science in 2003. 
uh, and they are derivatives of this, um, of these HAP uh, families, uh, which are uh, very interesting. Um, another very, very, uh, classic or historical uh, uh, compound with, with uh, phenylpropanamide derivatives, uh, the AT series, but there are many other uh, drugs, as you can see, uh, that serve as a backbone for, for, for different uh, um, uh, members of the, these families. What you have to remember is that these uh, capsid assembly modulators are not a uh, uh, substrate analog, and they, what they are targeting is protein-protein interaction, so the interaction with uh, uh, um, protein dimers. So here you see uh, some example. We show you two, two types of example. One is from uh, um, the work done by uh, Assembly that was presented at, uh, at EASL earlier this year. Um, they have uh, d developed um, uh, an assay uh, to, um, uh, to screen for, uh, for drugs uh, that would have an effect on, on, on HPV replication and CCC DNA formation with an HBE antigen reporter uh, assay in cell culture. Um, and uh, wh what they have shown is that their, their compound can uh, inhibit with capsid formation and, and promote a formation of smaller uh, capsid particles, as you, as you can see here. Um, and uh, uh, they are now uh, considering to, to enter in, in, in clinical uh, trials. So if we, if we made a, uh, make a summary of the, the mode of action um, is that the, this uh, capsid assembly modulators they, they stabilize uh, uh, the capsids, they accelerate assembly, um, and they block plus trans uh, DNA uh, synthesis. So they have uh, multiple activities. Um, the, the mode of action may be uh, complex, and um, it could be in the end that not all drugs will have the same mode of action, and some of the drugs may have multiple mode of action. And, and we will see uh, then with the uh, uh, preclinical evaluation, but also with the clinical trials, whether this uh, additional effect will, will hold true or not. Um, I will show you here um, uh, a second example, which is the, uh, uh, the class of molecule developed by, by Novira and now by, by, by Janssen, uh, where we have more data that, that are um, publicly available. Um, and um, uh, they, um, they were able to show some preclinical and, and some uh, early phase clinical uh, trial data. So, so just uh, to, to, to remember, because we will have to, to see what are the biomarkers that we want to, to, to study, and, and this will be part of the important discussion for clinical development. Uh, obviously, as, as I told you, uh, capsid assembly modulators are expected to, to inhibit viral DNA synthesis, so viral DNA will, will, will go down in the, in the bloodstream. Uh, but if we... Um, um, block viral DNA synthesis with, nuke, what, what we, with nukes, uh, what will happen is that you, you have uh, an enrichment in this capsid uh, containing a viral RNA or pregenomic RNA. Um, and um, this um, RNA, circulating RNA, can be still seen in, in nuke treated patients. But with the capsid assembly modulators, one might expect to see a decrease of this RNA uh, uh, containing particles in the, in the bloodstream. And this is what they showed in, 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 in tissue culture, that, that these uh, uh, capsid assembly modulators uh, can inhibit not only HPV DNA, but also HPV RNA uh, release uh, in cell culture. By contrast, nukes add the expected effect on DNA, but not on uh, uh, released RNA. Um, so they went on to uh, um, uh, in vivo studies in humanized mice uh, with the, uh, 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 the Novira uh, compound, and they, they had uh, mice receiving different type of drugs, either the uh, vehicle or um, pegylated interferon uh, or um, antecavir or the capsid assembly modulator here in, in, in yellow, and here is the uh, combination of the capsid assembly modulator and interferon, and here you have the, re the results in terms of HBV DNA uh, uh, suppression. So the combination of interferon plus the capsid assembly modulator was more efficient in terms of all DNA suppression. 
Now, let's see the circulating RNA. So what is happening in these mice? Uh, so the uh, uh, vehicle uh, receiving uh, mice didn't see any uh, decline of our RNA. Um, as expected, the antecavir receiving mice didn't see any, any effect on the vo circulating viral RNA. And now uh, interferon and uh, the capsid assembly modulator in monotherapy add uh, uh, one to two log decline of, of our RNA in serum, and which was expected, but because of different mode of action, uh, it was interferon and capsid assembly modulators. And what is inter very interesting is a combination of both, uh, which gave a, a, a much stronger, uh, almost uh, a four to five log decline in circulating viral RNA. So this could be, we have to see whether this new biomarker are robust and would be important to evaluate the uh, uh, clinical efficacy in, in, in our patients because we will need these biomarkers, these new biomarkers to, to have a, a good evaluation of, uh, uh, of the new drugs. And here the, they went on to a phase 1b study that was presented at ASLD and ESOL. Uh, with, uh, it was a dose escalation uh, of the capsid assembly uh, uh, modulator plus in some, in some harm, uh, plus interferon. And here you see the effect on HPV DNA in this patient that re received the drug for 28 days. It was really phase 1b. Um, here you see, um, so in terms of HPV DNA, um, the uh, uh, combination of in pegylated interferon and the capsid assembly modulator, uh, which gave the better vowel suppression. Um, and here's the uh, uh, capsid assembly modulator at the highest dose in monotherapy. And here, pegylated interferon as a monotherapy. So it seems that there is a better effect. It's, not, it's phase 1b, small numbers, um, but still it's interesting. And now in terms of vowel RNA, um, clearly the, uh, the combination of uh, interferon and the highest dose of the uh, capsid assembly modulator gave the, the best uh, suppression, 1.5 log. Uh, versus the uh, two monotherapies um, um, at the highest dose for the capsid assembly modulators. The other had almost no, no, no effect on uh, viral RNA. Now we have to see whether this uh, viral RNA is, is clinically uh, uh, meaningful as a biomarker and so on. But this is really uh, very interesting and we, we have to to, to, to move forward from the data that are now available. I mean, it's just uh, very fresh data. So another uh, question, as I mentioned at the, uh, at the beginning, is whether we could have additional effect of these capsid assembly modulators uh, be beyond the uh, vowel DNA and or vowel RNA suppression. Uh, one is whether uh, um, these capsid assembly modulators could release or, or restore uh, innate immunity uh, in infected cells. And here is a, a, an experiment that was, was done in um, heparagy cells expressing the, uh, the core protein in an uh, in inducible manner. And in these cells, we, we could see that when uh, um, the capsid protein is expressed, then the um, TLR3 stimulation leads to a, a decrease in interferon expression, so uh, as if the capsid protein had a negative effect on the interferon responses in, the, uh, in these cells. And when we, we use the, uh, the historical capsid assembly modulator, so the, the Bayer series and the AT series, uh, where the capsid protein couldn't uh, traffic to the nucleus, then we could restore these interferon uh, responses. Uh, so this may be uh, uh, an interesting added effect that may explain in part the, uh, the, the uh, enhanced effect of the combination between the capsid assembly modulators and interferon that was seen in the phase 1b st uh, studies. But this needs further exploration, obviously. And the other potential uh, additive effect is on the uh, CCC DNA transcription, and Massimo uh, showed you s uh, rapidly some uh, data or rational that the capsid 
protein can sit on CCC DNA and may affect its, its transcriptional activity. And here using uh, 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 an app deriva derivatives, or app 12, uh, it could show that in different cell culture system uh, that the uh, uh, pre-genomic RNA uh, synthesis is decreased in the, in the cells that are treated with this uh, HAP12 uh, compound, and this may be linked to uh, uh, an ep epigenetic modification uh, on CCC DNA. Now we'll have to see whether this translates in vivo in patients, uh, and again, this is uh, an, also another argument to say that at some point we may need to have uh, access to liver biopsy samples to show uh, uh, the, the proof of concept. So in perspective, um, what can we say? Um, can we combine nukes and, and capsid assembly modulators um, to, to enhance viral separation uh, and act on the CCC DNA pool? And I agree with Stefan, and it's the reason why I, I, I added or other antivirals like uh, entry inhibitors to, to act on this CCC DNA pool. And I think this is a, a very important uh, a question to be, to be answered in the future, and we will have now the tools and the weapons to, to, to work on combination. Uh, and I think for, for the capsid assembly uh, modulators, it will be very important to see whether we will have an ad, really an additional activity on CCC DNA transcription or, or, or innate immunity, because this could be the foundation for uh, combination studies and to, to give the, the rationale to find what, what would be the best drug or class of drug to combine with. Uh, and with this, I will uh, uh, conclude because we can also discuss immune modulators combination, but this will be discussed this afternoon. And I would like to thank my collaborators in, in, in the department in Lyon and, uh, and uh, collaborators uh, uh, in different groups uh, worldwide, and Adam Zlotnik and Lalo Flores for, for sharing information and slides uh, on their uh, uh, really recent data on capsid assembly modulators. Thank you.